Hey everybody, Jim Sammons. Uh, really excited here to uh, this have our first kind of interview style um, live broadcast. So uh, if we make any mistakes on this, uh, be patient with me. Like I said, whole different controls. I experimented with it yesterday, and it was kind of our first time to to give it a go. So um, I'll make sure that we. Had that all going right. Okay, so um, yeah, so we announced it uh, a few days ago. Uh, we're gonna have our, our buddy Jim McGowan on from Ray Marine. He's uh, very generously uh, uh, donated a uh, Dragonfly 5 to one of our participants. So um, remember that to be eligible, we need you to like, Comment, share, all that stuff. Wow, I put up the wrong thing. See, it's all new stuff. Oh, <laughs> that one's showing. <laughs> there you go. So um, like, comment, and share uh, during this broadcast if you want to um, be a part of it. So got a whole bunch of people here already making comments. Look at that. Hey, Jason, Jeremy. Um Man, look at all these comments already, and I wasn't even ready. This is uh, very cool. So, um, yeah, let me uh, bring in Jim McGowan. And like I said, these controls are kind of awkward for me, trying to figure out where everything is. And there we go. We got uh, Jim McGowan. From Raymarie and Jim, thanks so much for uh, for joining me here and for, for first being such a big supporter of the kayak fishing show and kayak fishing in general. Um, you know, a, as a quick story, um, several years ago now, um, a buddy of mine that I fish with a lot, he's like, "Dude, have you seen the new Raymarine Dragonfly?" And it was just coming out; it hadn't even, wasn't really in the markets yet. He goes, have you seen this thing? He goes, this thing is going to be perfect for our kayaks. Um, I took a look at it, um, was very impressed. I contacted Ray Marine and said, hey, you know, I've got this show, yada, yada, yada. I'd be, love to see one of your units. Jim says, immediately goes, wow, we really want to get into kayak fishing. Let me send you a unit so you can tell us what you think. And from there, we developed a relationship with the show and everything else. And it's just been fantastic. And I can't thank Ray Marine and, and Jim particularly for, for helping us out. Oh, you're very welcome, Jim. It's, uh, it's been very exciting for us. Um, you know, it, at the time that we first chatted several years ago, we were obviously uh, pretty new to the kayak fishing scene. And uh, getting your feedback on the products has been tremendous. Um, you know, we've, we've taken uh, the feedback from you and, and your viewers and everybody else in the kayak community. Um, it's one of the nicest things about it is everybody's so open and forthcoming with constructive criticism. And uh, we've been able to add all sorts of features and uh, new capabilities to, to Dragonfly and our other products as well. They really uh, round them out nicely. Well, you know, and that's the thing, you know, that I've seen just since the beginning, because Raymer or uh, the Dragonfly went through some changes pretty quickly. And I think that had a lot to do with feedback from the kayak anglers. Uh, it sure did. It sure did. Yeah. Um, we um, uh, had the kind of the initial uh, model out there and it was, you know, honestly probably designed more for the small power motor uh, in mind, but the kayaking uh, quickly, uh, community so quickly adopted it. Um, and, you know, it works out pretty well because it's small size and low power draw, but there were certainly some things on it that uh, you know, we found could be uh, improved. And that's why you'll see, for example, between the first generation and second generation Dragonflies, we went from the uh, kind of the control knob and joystick layout to the big rubberized buttons, which are uh, even better for, you know, all weather. And when your hands are really, really wet or, you know, covered in fish scales and guts and everything else. Uh, so it just kind of made for a much more rugged and easy to use product in that small environment. Well, for sure. And what I've always told companies that I've worked with is if you ever want somebody to really test your equipment to see how well it'll hold up to elements, give it to a kayak angler uh, because we will abuse everything, particularly saltwater guys. And, and not that saltwater guys are so much hardcore. It's just that the elements, the salt, 
uh, and, you know, salt crystallizes and gets in things. And, you know, kayak anglers can beat up anything. And, you know, not to mention the rolling in a serve or rolling everywhere or just, you know, like I said, hitting it with a fish because everything is such uh, in a compact area on your kayak. So very close quarters. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so um, since the uh, the dragonfly came around initially, like you said, there's there's been some uh, really cool changes uh, it, it, and Raymarine seems to be updating constantly. Um, yes. Yeah. It's been actually a pretty exciting time for us for uh, the last several years. Um, Dragonfly was kind of our um, entry into the world of what we call chirp down vision uh, using chirp sonar technology, which is a little bit different from what a lot of other fish finders had been using up until that point. Now, now chirp has actually become pretty much the industry standard. Um, but back then it was brand new and no one had really seen it before. And for, for folks that don't know what it is, what, what chirp technology is, is instead of a sonar transmitting on just a single frequency or a single tone into the water, or maybe a pair of tones, um, chirp actually sends a blast of frequencies into the water. Uh, it sounds, if you could hear it with your ear, it would actually sound kind of like a police siren in the water. It's a good thing the fish can't hear it. Uh, but by putting all those frequencies in the water, it actually gives us very, very fine uh, resolution. Um, so that's what allows us to, to, in that down vision technology in particular, to give us this very lifelike views of the bottom. They almost look like a black and white photo of the, the, the rocks and the structure below and the fish and bait, as opposed to just colored blobs on a screen. So it, would it still be true to say, and this is what I used to hear initially, was that your normal fish finder signal is, is really better at seeing the fish. And then the down vision, the chirp, all that is better at seeing the structure. They both kind of have their things that they're designed for. And generally, yes, yeah, the chirp, the high chirp channel on it, um, it's uh, the, on a dragonfly, it's the, uh, the channel that usually has the blue background uh, and uses kind of the rainbow of colors. So that broadcasts over a frequency span of 170 to 230 kilohertz. And that band is very, very good for detecting um, the air bladders uh, in fish that have bladders. And it's also really good for picking up uh, larger fish and picking up a lot of their, um, their muscle mass and their, their um, you know, kind of their, their flesh and, and bones uh, image nicely on that. The down vision um, uses a much higher frequency. It uh, starts at 320 kilohertz and goes as high as 380 kilohertz. And we set it up with a very, very fine beam uh, on the uh, transducer. It's uh, about 1.4 degrees forward and aft, and it's a 60 degree wide beam. Um, and what that does is it allows us to get the beam down into the nooks and crannies in the rocks and in the coral or whatever else you have down underneath the boat. And uh, it does a tremendous job of imaging structure. Um, if you've ever had the opportunity to take a down vision system out and particularly run over something man-made that's down there on the bottom. Uh, you, you can tell what it is for, for sure. If it's a boat down there or, you know, whatever else is down there. Um, it, it gives a very realistic picture back. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how far, I mean, I mean, I started kayak fishing in the late eighties um, and we were putting fish finders on these things in the nineties. And you basically had your little portable unit and you had little fish icons um, and, you know, and it would be batch and, and, and they worked. They did what we wanted them to do. But the, the whole technology is, is just leaps and bounds ahead of where it was back then. Ooh, the funny thing is, is you get the, you have those little fish icons. Now, mm -hmm. with certain fish, that chirp technology actually, it shows what looks like an actual fish. Certain fish yeah. show up, looks just like a picture of a fish on there. Yeah, and that's a function of the, uh, the down vision system. The down vision has such fine resolution that if you get a, a large enough fish on it, you can get a really good image, you know, particularly of that top section of the fish. You can see its dorsal fin and its back and its tail. Um, and then depending on what kind of species you're fishing, too, if, if they're, you know, really, really good-sized fish, they, they show up bright and clear, and uh, it's very obvious what they are. No, I paddled over the top of a, a school of tarpon. And it was like, I looked at my screen, and, oh my God, that is a tarpon. <laughs> you know, it wasn't this arch signal, anything like that. It was like, yeah, that's a tarpon. That's a picture yeah. of a tarpon. You can always <laughs> take a measurement of their length uh, off of it. The image is so accurate. 
Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so anybody watching this, please, you know, uh, comment, like, share if you want a chance to win that uh, dragonfly. Also, if you have particular questions about the technology uh, set settings, if you've got the uh, the Raymarine uh, Dragonfly already, if you have questions about its function, you know, throw them out there. We'll try and answer all these questions for you. We'll put them up on screen and um, get them to you. Uh, actually, somebody had a question on the, I just saw, how does the new transducer fit on the Kraken? Yes, so uh, yeah, I saw that pop up as well, and I uh, I brought a few items along for show and tell, so I can actually hold up some transducers so people can kind of see what they look like. So, uh, so someone mentioned uh, new transducer. So uh, the new transducer that you're probably talking about is this guy here. So this oh, that, is an RV <laughs> 100. Yeah, and this is from our Axiom line, and this is our newest. Uh, system. Uh, we brought it out uh, back in February. So it's just coming up on a year old. And the Axioms, um, they come in a range of sizes, um, the smallest of which is a seven inch. So this transducer looks kind of like a monster. And it, and it is a pretty big transducer when you kind of look at it all by itself. Um, but what makes this transducer special is this has uh, down vision and uh, sonar, just like the Dragonfly has, um, but this also has side vision, so you've got side scan sonar, and this has uh, full 3D sonar in it as well. Um, and then the other thing it has inside is actually a miniature gyro package. This is a gyro stabilized system, so when you're using our Real Vision 3D, it actually um, stabilizes the image, and the gyro in it senses the motion of the kayak or whatever boat it's mounted to, and it allows you to do some pretty cool things in 3D mode as well, like rotate the image, uh, track back uh, on an area that you just paddled over so you can actually build out a larger 3D model of the structure underneath you. Um, so it is a fairly big transducer. We can make this a little bit smaller for a kayak installation. So out of the box, it's actually got a mount on the top. Uh, you can see this big bolt hole here. Let me hold it up. There you go. Uh, and this would be for a transom mount on a powerboat. But if I flip it up, notice there is a little Allen key hole here. So if you unscrew that, this whole uh, transom mount carrier slides right out of the top so we can reduce this down to a fairly small uh, package um, and it will fit into the scuppers of some boats uh, for some other boats it might be a little bit too big so you can come up with some uh, different alternatives I know you had to do that on your own boat Jim yeah uh, to get this in there nicely yeah mine's on the on the transom of my boat <laughs> yep so, yeah uh, and the solution we came up with looked looked pretty good actually it looks like that'll hold up quite nicely yeah, and it's it's not really that um, doesn't make the kayak that much bigger, just a, a couple of inches. So uh, there is a video up on that on Kayak Fishing Tales, our YouTube channel, if anybody wants to see that. Um, but also, I think you may have been talking about the the newer Dragonfly transducer yeah. versus the original transducer. I got those here too. Bear with me, like what? <laughs> so this is the original dragonfly transducer um again this is a transom mount that's attached to it but this unbolts you pull the bolt out and you end up with a nice eyelet right here in the top of the transducer and then here's your bundle of cable so this transducer is to just designed to fit right up into the transducer stoppers on all the uh, jackson uh, fish finder ready models uh so it is the scupper should be that that shape uh, and it'll go right up inside and this transducer works with dragonfly it works with the uh, second generation Dragonfly Pro uh, models. Um, you can you can actually use this with an Axiom as well. Um, though if you use this transducer with an Axiom, you're limited to just uh, down vision and high chirp because there's no side vision or 3D elements okay. in this particular transducer. Um, but that but that is an option. Um, we when, when we rolled out the second generation Dragonfly product. We did kind of redesign the transducer to make it a little slimmer. So this is the second generation Dragonfly transducer here. We call this a uh, uh, CPT uh, DVS transducer for down vision and sonar. So this actually comes with a transom mounting kit that would normally slide in on this uh, kind of locking mechanism here and it would attach to the back of the boat, but then you can strip it down to make it as small as possible to go into the scuppers uh, on a kayak. 
a lot of times these will fit into the molded strakes on the bottom too. That's what I actually had to do on my son's boat um, that uh, he paddles with me all the time. And then you've got obviously your cable bundle going up. This one um, can be a little tricky sometimes on the Jackson boats just because the cable has a front uh, exit point. So one of the things that we do have still, uh, we do still have the original generation transducer available. You can see them both for comparison. So this is the one that is Jackson ready. Um, and we make an adapter cable so you can use the uh, older style transducer on the newer style Dragonfly units. Um, and they, uh, they work just fine. And uh, that's something you can actually check in with. If you're buying a Jackson boat and you're going to go Dragonfly, um, we, we can actually change that transducer out for you. Uh, so you have all the right gear to, to work with the boat as designed. And, and just to, again, another reason that we love working with Ray Marine and, and how they've been so awesome working with the kayak community, the fact that they'll swap out that transducer, no charge. Uh, so you have the right one that's going to work with your boat. I mean, that's, that's, you're not going to get that from too many companies. <laughs> yeah. Not that, I've ever, not that I've ever worked with anyway. Um, what other questions we got here? Did, uh, did something about, I think that's about the, the big one. There you go. There's a question for you. If transducer pocket, you know, I don't know much about the, uh, the transducer fits in the Hobie transducer pocket without using something like the Burley pro cover. Uh, I don't know specifically for that one. I do know the guys at Hobie have, um, we have sent samples of all our transducers to any of the kayak manufacturers that request it. Um, you know, we certainly want to be able to fit a wide range of boats out there. Um, so I, I know that they have, um, they have definitely seen our, our deucers and I would imagine that you can probably get it up in there. The, the second generation Dragonfly transducer again, this is the one that most of them are going to come with in the box now. It's pretty slim, pretty slender. Um, I, I would imagine you could probably get it up in there with even with a little bit of minor modification. It's something okay. where, uh, you know, if you're not sure, uh, certainly feel free to like snap a photo of your transducer pocket, maybe stick in a, a ruler in the photo so we can get a couple of measurements off of it. And uh, <laughs> our tech support team is always certainly um, – you know, willing to uh, measure up uh, stuff and, and uh, advise you accordingly. Right. And there's a question from uh, Joshua asking about cyan imaging that is a little more kayak friendly or is the uh, Axiom one the only one available? I so think, yeah, at the moment, Axiom, yeah, at the moment, Axiom is, uh, is, is our best solution for all in one. Um, and the transducer is, you know, it is admittedly kind of big. Uh, but it has you know, all those features built in, including the gyro uh, in there. Um, a lot of it really just kind of depends on your particular boat and what's going to fit uh, in there. Um, I know there are certain brands of boats where this actually will fit up in, the, in their scuppers uh, without uh, too much difficulty. And then others, it's a little bit of a challenge. But one of the nice things in the kayak community, too, is there are so many aftermarket uh, accessories out there that make mounting these things up so you can look to you know folks like Yak Attack and Ram and uh, all, all the other vendors out there have lots of solutions. Right and and as as you and I discussed previously and the reason I actually put that transducer on the back of my boat is these transducers are are actually pretty tough. They are. I mean they can they can handle I mean you don't want to drop it off your car or anything like that but I mean they, they can handle a certain amount of abuse. Yep. Yeah, they sure can. I, I've had um, one of these axioms on my own boat uh, for the past year. And um, one of the obviously one of the nice things about working here is that I can uh, really torture stuff. <laughs> and if I, if I torture anything to the point of death, then I can uh, certainly bring it you know, right back in and drop it on someone's desk and say, hey, we need to look at this. Um, but I will say that the, the, uh, the transducers do take a, a pretty good amount of abuse. Um, you know, the one I have mounted on the bottom of my boat, it has been over stumps. It has been over rocks. It has been dragged up and down the beach, um, you know, short of dropping the boat off the roof of my car, which I actually accidentally did one day. But <laughs> fortunately, the <laughs> transducer <laughs> didn't, uh, didn't have uh, uh, demise because of that. My, my rear view mirror almost did, but or my side view uh -huh. mirror. Yeah, Dennis, <laughs> is <laughs> Dennis is asking about, uh, do you recommend a through hull or side mount? Um, obviously you can't go through hull if you want side imaging. Um, yeah. 
So uh, in terms of going through the hull, um, Dennis, I'm not sure if you mean by that, um, trying to mount something inside the hull and transmitting through the skin of the boat. Um, Which is a, historically what a lot of guys used to do. They would put their transducer yeah. and they put it in a well and let it shoot through the plastic. Yep. And with some transducers, you can do that. I don't think that with side imaging, that's going to work very well. Um, honestly, I haven't I, tried, I tried it. it. I tried it with the old side imaging, uh, yep. that double one, and I could never get it to work right. It's yeah. It's just too much transducer to try and eliminate too much of an air gap. Uh, so I never really got that good signal that I wanted. Yeah. There are some some pretty good over-the-side mounting uh, solutions uh, out there. Um, I, I've seen a bunch of those actually used with the Axiom transducers and with the Dragonfly uh, transducers too. So you can put, you know, a small arm over the side. Uh, it's, you know, easy enough to pull it up or put it down as you need it. Right. And I think those work well for the pedal boats. Yep. Um, because you've always got a rudder control in your hand. Uh, as a paddler, I was never a fan because I don't like that drag up in front of me. So I was never a, a fan. That's why I came with the uh, solution I did, putting it off the stern rather than having it any kind of pull to one side of the boat. So the, the, the thing is, you know, as kayak anglers, we've always kind of been ones to kind of work with things and uh, try and figure out what's going to work the best, <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of the fun of it, really. You know, mount, I mean, rigging a kayak sometimes is as much fun as getting out there on it. It, it certainly can be a challenge, and um, but yeah, that, it, I, I agree with you. That's kind of part of the fun uh, as well. Is um, I, you know, I'm always one to to look at um, various products we make, and, and many of them are clearly not designed for a uh, a kayak application. But I, I'm always inclined to try to bring one out with me anyway. Um, <laughs> one, of my, one of my projects for this spring, uh, I, I want to do a paddle with uh, one of our. As you know, we're part of FLIR system, so I'm going to put one of our mini thermal imagers up on the bow of my boat and take it out on the river one night. We have a lot of wildlife in my area. I think that would just be a lot Yeah, of I mean, talk about the stuff from Raymarine. FLIR also has some amazing stuff that, that I've got my boat, my personal boat, loaded with with uh, yeah. um, Raymarine and FLIR yeah. products. It's just absolutely fantastic. Hey, D. Kaminsky, good to see you on here. Um, you're asking about what is the weight. I, I assume you're talking about the fish finder. Or you're asking about how much my eye weight. I've gotten really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know the Axiom is heavier than the Dragonflies, as is the transducer. Yeah, the transducer, this this one here, this is, um, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but I'm going to give you a guesstimate right here. I mean, this is probably a pound and a half, maybe two pounds. Um, the displays themselves... Uh, probably range anywhere from three to five pounds. Um, right, with Axiom, right this, this Axiom is considerably heavier than the Dragonfly. Yeah, with Axioms, you've got a lot more going on uh, inside and, and in terms of the housing uh, as well. Um, Axioms have a they have a quad core processor and a lot of memory. There's a lot of computing going on inside an Axiom, uh, so that generates a fair amount of heat that we have to dissipate. Uh, so a big hunk of the back of every axiom is actually a heat sink. It's made out of aluminum. So it's a, it's a pretty good sized piece of metal back there, uh, but it's there for good reason, but it does create a little bit of weight. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's heavy, but I don't know. Heavy is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it just feels more solid. Um, but the, like I said, I've been using the dragonfly for a long time. What are the, what are the basic differences? I mean, if somebody said, what, it, if I was trying to make a, a, a choice, you know, I'm walking yep. into a shop and I go, you know, I've got a little bit of money. I can buy the Axiom. I can buy the Dragonfly. Why would I choose one versus the other? Yep. The Dragonfly definitely is a little bit uh, simpler uh, product. Um, so Dragonfly, um, we have a couple of different variants of it, but the most popular one out there is called Dragonfly Pro. And Dragonfly Pro has two channels of sonar. So it has down vision and chirp sonar in it. It also has a GPS um, and chart plotter uh, in there. And as far as the charting goes, I saw that question just pop up a second ago. Uh, we work with Navionics charts. We work with CMAP. Uh, and then we also have our own brand of charts called Lighthouse. And Lighthouse is a platform that actually lets us bring in all sorts of different little uh, kind of niche charts. Um, so we work with vendors like, uh, for example, standard mapping that does high resolution satellite maps of a lot of the backwaters in the, the Gulf coast and the South, 
um, and a lot of international charts as well um, are, are available in that, through that Lighthouse Charts uh, program. Um, but they, they work with Dragonfly and they work with, uh, with Axiom. So kind of back to the differences between them. Uh, so Dragonfly is an all-in-one product. Uh, it's got the two channels of sonar plus the GPS and charting. Um, it is a button controlled unit. So you've got a rubber keypad uh, for control. It is actually not a touch screen. Um, and the user interface in Dragonfly is uh, designed to be a little more streamlined. Um, so the menus don't go quite as deep in Dragonfly as they do on some of our other products. Um, it has kind of a more basic feature set. Um, so particularly when you are doing navigation functions in the chart plotter, um, you'll see you can enter waypoints and you can record tracks. It doesn't let you do some advanced features like building long distance routes and things like that. We know most Dragonfly users aren't going to be, you know, covering hundreds of miles, you know, over GPS navigation. So, uh, so it's a streamlined interface to make it easier to use. When we go to an Axiom uh, product, Axiom's actually what we call a multifunction display. So it's got uh, a built-in GPS and chart plotter. Uh, it's got um, a couple of different options for sonar. Um, the Axiom that most people know and love is called an Axiom RV. RV stands for real vision. So that has our sonar system that's got down vision, high chirp, side vision, and 3D in it. And it's, uh, it all goes through that that all-in-one transducer. Um, another variant of Axiom you'll see out there is called Axiom DV, and that is an Axiom that has uh, down vision and high chirp, uh, just like a dragonfly. Um, but Axiom is a touchscreen product, so it is all entirely touch controlled. It runs our Lighthouse 3 operating system. Uh, so a little bit different uh, user interface uh, from Dragonfly. And then Axiom can do a lot of advanced features as well. You can network it. Uh, you can connect all sorts of different types of sensors to it, um, not all of which you'd use in a kayak application. Some of them are obviously more designed for larger uh, vessels where you might have radar, you might have night vision and, and other things. Um, but uh, it does have a lot of capabilities uh, in there. Right. Everybody I talk to that has the Axiom, uh, mainly boaters, uh, my good friend, um, Ulf in Sweden, he put some on his boat and he just jumps up and down about the thing, you know, uh, just, but it is more complicated. You know, you say the, the Ray Marie, or I'm sorry, the dragonfly tends to be a little bit more plug and play user friendly. Yep. Yeah. And with the, uh, with the Axiom product, the, the Lighthouse three interface um, was designed to be very simple. It's, it's kind of an icon driven um, device similar to a smartphone. So you have essentially apps for all your major functions and you can customize the screen and show you know multiple things at the same time. Um, but what Axiom has over Dragonfly is there's a lot more depth to what that product uh, can do. There's a lot more options for customization. Um, so, you know, you can really truly make it your own where Dragonfly kind of has a, some presets out of the box and that's kind of how it's, how it's locked in. Right. So I actually had some uh, questions that came kind of, if you will, frequently asked questions um, sure. that come to me. Um, you know, so if somebody buys, say, and let's talk about the Dragonfly mainly, because uh, that's what we're going to be giving away here. So let's talk about that. Somebody somebody gets a Dragonfly. Um, what are some ideal settings? Because, I mean, obviously it comes in an, an auto kind of thing, but you can also set some things on it to give you the ideal situation, say for fresh water versus salt water versus shallow water versus, you know, I'm fishing in a place with say no bottom. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the box, um, Dragonfly runs in a fully automatic mode and probably for, you know, 95% of the people out there that's going to do everything they could ever want it to do. Um, but it does have uh, manual controls in it as well. So if you wanted to, 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 to tune it a little bit or to tweak the settings, uh, you certainly can uh, can do that too. And the, the main things that you can adjust in a Dragonfly uh, are its gain, which is the overall sensitivity uh, of the system. So if you're getting into deeper water, you might try turning the gain up a little bit and it'll help to um, make small targets look a little bit larger, uh, make it a little more sensitive to small bait fish and things like that that are down there. 
Um, another setting that you can adjust is called the uh, surface filter. And what the surface filter does is it works from the surface of the water down to about eight to 10 feet. And it kind of takes care of that kind of graininess you get at the top of the, the fish finder, most fish finder displays. And that either comes from just kind of wave action if you're in salt water, um, it can be uh, from the wind uh, and from the chop, even if you're in, uh, in fresh water. And uh, to some extent, if you're a very aggressive paddler, uh, sometimes you can even see your own paddle strokes. Uh, and the surface filter will take those out of the top uh, of the fish finder. Um, that's one that I pl actually play with quite a lot uh, when I'm out in the water. I, I, I like to adjust the surface filter and kind of clean up that top layer uh, just so I can see a little bit better what's right below the boat. Right. So, I, so, so what would I do? Um, say, you know, I, I mean, I've got I've got 1,600 feet of water, yep. very cl very close to shore here in La Jolla. Obviously, I'm not trying to see the bottom. So what would, what would I think about setting my fish finder for then? Um, so it's got a couple of different screen modes that you can employ uh, in it and that it can be useful. For example, it has um, a zoom mode. When you get into really deep water, you can actually have it magnify a certain portion of the water column. Uh, let me see if I can actually show it to you. I've got a dragonfly here. I'm going to pick my webcam up. I'm going to spin it around. And I think you guys can see that. So um, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to come out of the split screen mode. I'm showing uh, down vision and sonar at the same time. I'm just going to go to a full uh, sonar display. <clears throat> this is simulated sonar. I'm in the office. I don't have any good good water uh, <laughs> nearby. <laughs> uh, but if I uh, uh, go into the uh, my menu options here now, uh, oops, wrong button there. I press the OK button. This will open the menu for me. And uh, for example, I can come down here to display options. I think you can see that. Wait, let me put just you on screen. That'll... Should be able to see a little better now. Okay. And let me kind of show you some of the options that you have in here for you can configure things. Um, you can change the color settings. So right now I've got a blue background. You can make it a different color. Um, this feature is called A-Scope. And when we turn a scope on, um, what this can do for us is this is the live view of what's in the transducer. So everything that you see scrolling across the screen is basically um, history. It's all been processed um, by the computer uh, and turned into an image. The a scope um, actually just shows echoes in the beam of the transducer. Um, so it's a nice way to show show you when uh, you're directly over a fish or directly over something else in the water column. Um, and then you'll see it uh, roll out of the A-scope and onto the screen. In this case, there's a stack of, I think it's actually a tree or tree branches. This is a, a freshwater recording that, uh, that we're looking at here. If you've got some other things in here you can turn on and turn off. Target depth ID, if you turn it on, it'll actually put depth readings uh, in feet, fathoms, or meters, depending on how you set it up next to all the fish targets it sees. We can turn on depth lines, which kind of give us some reference points. So at a glance, oops, we can see what's going on uh, at various depths in the display. Um, white line will actually show us where the solid bottom is. Oops, I hit the wrong one there. Because <laughs> the white line, there's the, the solid bottom reference. So if you're uh, in water that's really muddy, so it's kind of blown out the camera a little bit there when I turned all the white on. Uh, but that actually helps you to differentiate basically between the solid bottom and the mud and any other layers uh, that are down there. That's actually a good question. You know, that's another one. People I say, well, you got to look for hard bottom. What does hard bottom look like on a fish finder? So hard bottom, um, it's mainly going to show up very thin. So this bottom stripe that we have down here, um, is kind of representative of the density of the bottom. When the bottom gets really soft, what happens is the sound energy gets into the uh, mud and the other debris at the bottom, and it kind of bounces around before it returns back an echo to the transducer. And that tends to widen out uh, the image. When you get in onto a very hard bottom with just like rock or maybe even sand, sand usually uh, shows a pretty dense return as well, you'll actually see the bottom get very, very thin. Um, that, so that, that red stripe representing the hard bottom will be very, very thin, almost a, a pencil line or maybe, you know, maybe the width of a pencil. This back. <laughs> so 
So there's quite a few settings in there that you can adjust and, and customize the system. And of course, you can um, you can look at mo two channels at the same time. When I, I originally brought that up, I had both Danvision and Sonar going simultaneously, and they sync up with one another. And that can be kind of useful, especially when you're new to the system, to, to kind of figure out what it is that you're looking at. Because remember that Danvision is always going to give you a very realistic view of what's down there. It has high, very high resolution, high fidelity. Um, the the uh, chirp sonar is really going to target the fish uh, in the water column. Um, so you can kind of see how the targets react to the two different frequencies in the water. I see. Let's see. We have any, some other questions here. Well, there's one. <laughs> Adrian. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's very good question. What's that way to dragonfly the other competing brands in the kayak space? Are you kidding? There's no competition. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, uh, there were a couple of things that, that it really had going, um, you know, particularly when it first made its appearance. It, it was the first product on the market that had uh, Chirp Sonar at a price point that, you know, pretty much anybody could put one of these uh, on their boat. Uh, so no one had ever seen Chirp before, uh, particularly in such a small and compact uh, product. Another big thing that Dragonfly has going for it is the visibility uh, on the screen is really, really good, even in bright uh, sunlight. Um, it uses uh, LED backlighting. Um, it's a high visibility dis display. Um, it's sunglasses friendly. Um, so you shouldn't have any trouble at all in the bright sunshine seeing it. Right, and you know what I also liked about it, uh, just when I first got them, was just the size of the screen to the size of the unit. Yes, yeah. You know, it, it visually, you know, and I like my fish finder fairly far away from me. I don't, you know, some guys like to sit there and play with them all the time. Um, I usually like mine up away from me, so it's not in the way of landing fish or moving around the kayak. So visually, even on the smaller units, the screen was large. Yes. Yeah, um, it's a, actually a kind of a common theme across all of our products. And one of the things we always say when, when people ask us, you know, oh, what size screen should I buy? Um, no one has ever come up to us and complained that they bought a screen that was too big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, like I said, being able to to see that unit. Of course, with the Axiom I set up, um, I put on a remote control. Um, yes, you did. So yeah. that's I'm pretty excited about that. Still haven't had a chance to get this thing on the water. Um, as I told some of the viewers yesterday, I, I mounted it, went to Florida, came back, and been sick ever since. Yesterday was the first day I felt halfway decent. So I uh, still haven't had the Axiom on the water. So I have as many questions and as much to learn about that thing as anybody else. Um, all I've heard is just rave reviews, though. So, uh, again, and for people who are just joining, we are uh, with Jim McGowan from uh, Ray Marine, generously going to be giving away a Dragonfly 5 Pro to somebody who is with us today. So remember, you want to do that like, comment, share, get involved. And, and that kind of brings up another point, you know, love Ray Marine for being a part of this, but we want other sponsors involved in what we're doing. This is going to be more of a weekly thing. I'm doing more of these live broadcasts and the more people that participate, the more people that I can show these other sponsors that, Hey, we got a lot of participation with this. The more we get them involved and the more maybe cool stuff we can get from them too. So, you know, it's all, a, a snowball effect. So please do give us that thumbs up, uh, give us that uh, that share, and um, you know just keep visiting the page. And uh, of course, support the sponsors who are supporting us. You know <laughs> that's a, a big one. Um, let's see. Hi, Marsha. <laughs> that, that, that was the comment we got from Marsha. Just, just hi. <laughs> <laughs> I like that's nothing wrong with right. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jim, where are you, Jim? Uh, I'm actually at our uh, our secret headquarters in uh, Nashua, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. How's the weather out there? Uh, the, when I came into the building this morning, it was nine degrees and everything is frozen outside. So it's very similar to what I have here. I bet. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's it's about 80 degrees today here in San Diego. It's funny, every morning when I leave to go to work, actually, my kayaks are, they're actually on my trailer. Uh, outside, I got a, a tarp over them so they don't get too too snowy, but uh, they're taunting me. <laughs> so I can't wait for things to melt around here. 
Yeah. I, I, like I said, the only ice fishing I want to do is getting ice out of my cocktail. <laughs> Cause I, I don't, I don't, I don't do that kind of cold. I, um, so, um, as far as, I mean, you did some kind of unique stuff. I mean, the cool thing is, is that not only is Jim part of uh, Ray Marine, but he's also become a kayak fisherman. Yes. And you had to do some unique things to, like I did with my um, Jackson Kraken. Uh, you had to do some unique things to rig yours uh, up on your kayak. So what, what kind of things did you play with to get yours all rigged up? Sure. Yeah. So um, on my boat, um, uh, the boat I have is a Perception Pescador 120. Um, we got we got to put it into that. We got to get you in a yeah, Jackson. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to switch. So. <laughs> um, so I have my boat rigged up with an Axiom 9. Um, I have the RV100 transducer uh, mounted to it. Um, my boat actually did have a very large transducer. Uh, pocket uh, underneath. It wasn't quite as deep as I would have liked it, but it was close enough. Um, that was the hardest part was actually getting the transducer. I'm, I'm going to interrupt a little bit. I mean, you say it was big enough, but those for, for the side imaging on that, that still thing has, has to be exposed on the sides. How much of that transducer needs to actually be exposed? Um, so as we're looking at it here, um, ideally, we'd love about half of the vertical height of this to be able to see out. If, if it's cropped at all, what's going to happen is you'll lose a little bit of your side imaging up near the surface of the water. So you'll, you'll suffer a little bit at the sides. But basically, the elements are, um, let me see if we can see this, they're about halfway down the side uh, vertically uh, in this transducer. So this is basically all, all side vision is what most of the length of this is. The side vision elements are very long and slender. They, they actually, if you, if you <laughs> they're taken out here, they look like hot dogs, actually, about the profile of them. There's actually... Um, there's actually three of them in here. There's uh, one for the left, one for the right, and then one in the center for the down vision. Um, and then up forward, there's a circular puck for the high chirp. Oops, sorry, I realize you can't see this. High chirp is up front. And then there's two additional elements up here in the sides for the 3D array. And then the gyro is inside of it encapsulated uh, right in the transducer. Um, when I mounted this up on my boat, the challenge I had was the, um, the well was very, very... Uh, wide, I had plenty of width, um, I had plenty of depth at the forward end, I didn't have quite enough depth at the aft end, um, but the, the most difficult part is I didn't have any access to actually get any hardware in there. <laughs> like with the transducer in and I'm like, huh, how do I get a tool in there to tighten anything up? Uh, what I actually came up with is a solution that has worked for a year now. Um, I actually took some plastic, uh, not plastic, but nylon webbing uh, like you might have on like your life jacket buckles and things like that. And um, I used the bolt hole that's in the top here. And if we take the trans the transom bracket off, there's actually a second hole just like it right here. So I cut some nylon straps about yay wide and I bolted them to the transducer. Uh, and then I set the transducer into the pocket. And then I was able to come in with some uh, screws and with some uh, sealants on them and basically screw it uh, right into the bottom. Uh, and it so far has held up really, really well. The transducer is nice and tight up in there. The nylon webbing gives it just a little bit of give. So if I do hit something like a log or a stump or something like that, it, the transducer will move just just a little bit. But so far, it's been uh, pretty bulletproof. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Yeah, that's cool. And you've got, um, I said, you had the remote control mounted on yours as well. Yes, yeah, so um, the, the unit that both you and I are using is called an RMK-10, and it's a keypad unit uh, that works with Axiom, and uh, actually I've got one of them right here. I can show it to you. Sorry, didn't plan for this prop, but since it came up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is an RMK-10 uh, keypad, and you can see it's fairly small uh, from the front. And put it up next to my head so you can get a relative size on it. Um, and what I did on mine is I actually cut right into the side of my kayak, right next to my chair, right next to my seat, and I have it flush mounted in there. Um, so what I like about this is I have my Axiom uh, down by my feet, but this controller is literally right next to my right hand. So 
Uh, my hand can go right from my paddle down to the knob on the controller, and I can make adjustments to the axiom that's all the way down there at my toes. So I don't have to lean forward to do anything. So uh, that works works out pretty well. <clears throat> so we got a a question from I can't even don't even sure how to say the name. Whites. <laughs> uh, White? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys have different transducers for different units. Well, yes. Yeah. yeah, and I, I have a couple of show-and-tell items here. I can kind of uh, show off uh, what we've got. So these are all different kind of all-in-one fishing uh, transducers. So this is the <clears throat> um, original Dragonfly transducer. Uh, we call this a CPT-60 uh, when it's used with a Dragonfly or a CPT-100 uh, when it's used with uh, some of our Lighthouse 2 units, our ES series and our A series. Um, so this has uh, chirp sonar plus chirp down vision in it, and it's got a temperature sensor. Temperature sensor is that little silver uh, piece sticking out there. That's the temperature sensor. Um, so this style transducer, again, was available for um, the original Dragonfly, and uh, it was used um, with our... Um, a, or A series and ES series units that had uh, built-in down vision transducers. This is the second generation of that same transducer. So internally, the elements in here are identical. And this is actually kind of a good one for talking about uh, what all this does. Uh, up here in the forward part where it's rounded, um, that is your chirp sonar puck. Um, and then you've got these long... Uh, length of the transducer is actually, in this case, for the down vision elements. It uses a very long element. It produces a wide beam, uh, very wide left and right, but it's actually very narrow forward and aft uh, that gives it a lot of detail. And then the, uh, the third transducer, oops, that I just dropped, uh, is this guy here. Uh, this is the RV100. This is the standard uh, convertible transom mount that is used with an Axiom system. And again, this uh, top piece can be removed to, so you get a, a shorter profile on it. Um, and then you can use it in a lot of uh, different applications. You can use it in the kayak scupper. Uh, we make uh, brackets that attach to the top of it so it could be uh, mounted from below into uh, different types of vessels as well. And you, um, did say, one, you did say there's a certain amount of interchangeability. So I can use you the can, dragonfly yes. on the Axiom. Yeah, so the, um, the, the chirp down vision transducers uh, can be used on an Axiom system. Um, if you do that, then you would uh, give up your side vision and your 3D uh, because those transducers don't have those additional elements in them. Uh, but they do work for down vision and for uh, chirp sonar. So then you would basically, if you did that, Mm -hmm. you, you would have a murdered out race car dragonfly because you would have all the processing speed of the Axiom, but with the dragonfly transducer. Exactly. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. You'd, you'd have the, the sonar capabilities identical to, to dragonfly. You'd have, yeah, uh, trip sonar and down vision, uh, but it'd be on the quad core Axiom hardware. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have a race car dragonfly sort of. <laughs> And put it put it real simply. It would be pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody asked about the transducers again. Uh, was uh, let's see. I know I just saw it a second ago. Was something? Uh, uh, so there you go. Asking about that durability. Yeah. So the transducers are are actually pretty tough. Um, they they are designed to take some abuse. I mean, you think about when these are used in a powerboat application, for example. We know that a guy with a bass boat is going to be hitting tree stumps at seventy miles an hour with one of these, and and we want them to be able to take uh, some knocks and some dings without destroying them. The you know first time out on the water. Um, you know, I, I have firsthand experience with this one. Um, I've got this in the bottom of my boat on the center line. Um, mine actually does stick out a little bit lower than the keel of my boat, you know, probably by an eighth of an inch at the aft end. Um, and it's got a few scrapes in it from going over logs and rocks and things. Uh, but I have not had any issues whatsoever with sensitivity or, uh, you know, it's, it's going strong. So, cool. we got a question from Joey Pruitt about the, uh, accuracy of depth readings. 
Um, you know, the system is actually very accurate in its reading of depth. When you get into water less than 20 feet, um, you're going to have really good readings right down to about two feet or so. Once it gets below two feet, then then it does get a little uh, a little squirrely, and sometimes it'll just depend on what's on the bottom underneath you. If it's if it's solid and relatively clear, you can get uh, readings even shallower uh, than two feet. If it tends to be really lots of weeds or kelp or anything like that, uh, then a lot of times it, it will actually won't register uh, when you get down that low. Um, so generally, two feet is about the minimum threshold uh, that you're going to reliably get a reading to. But uh, in terms of the accuracy of that reading, uh, it's going to be pretty spot on. You know, I, I often actually check it just by sticking my paddle over the side in shallow water and kind of seeing how deep the water is, how far it comes up the grip and, and uh, saying, yep, it's it's about right. Well, uh, Tom Riley has a question that, of course, all of us kayak anglers would love an answer to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew this one was going to come up today. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the probably number one request that we get uh, from kayak anglers. And, and um, I, just before we actually started this broadcast, I had the sonar product manager was here in my office uh, on another project. And, and I had sent him a comment that someone had emailed in the other day about, about the same thing. Um, it is something that we're actively looking at. Um, one of the things that we have to be able to obviously justify is the market size when we, uh, when we build something out. But uh, um, we, we would really like to, um, to to start to offer shorter cables uh, for kayak installations. because Even uh, if it was a uh, combination kayak, small boater, you know, because yeah. right now, like with my ox Axiom, I think I've got one the size for a yacht. And, yeah. you know, I've got 20 <laughs> feet of cable coiled up in the in the back of my kayak. So you yeah, know, my and this, this has been an issue. This has been an issue since I started kayak fishing and putting um, fish finders on there. It's always been that way. You always have a ton of extra cable. Yeah. Um, with, uh, so. with Axiom, the, uh, it, it is a, a little exaggerated, too, because the transducer does so many things. The cable's a little bit thicker than right. what most people are used to. So when you make that coil up, too, it, it feels like, whoa, I've got a lot of cable here. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. But like I said, it just... I mean, I know, it, like, for me, that's always been another thing. God, if, if somebody would just make a kayak version of this thing. Um, but, you know, I, I think uh, Ray Marine has come pretty darn close with and, and has been so focused on that, that kayak small boater uh, market now since the Dragonfly came out. And, uh, like I said, so receptive. And, like I said, one of the most important impressive things to me was how quickly they made the changes uh, on the dragonfly once they saw that, hey, there's a couple little things that aren't work quite right here. And it was literally like the next year. And, and to yes, see it change yeah, that quickly was pretty amazing. Very quickly. One of the things we're always really proud of with Dragonfly, um, it's a product that we, you know, totally designed and engineered uh, in-house. We did everything. We did software. We did all the mechanical work. Uh, even the transducers uh, were all designed by our internal team. And it, it gave us a really um, high ability to design all the components in the system uh, to work together, you know, without any compromises. Um, you know, a, a lot of um, sounders that are out there in the market use what are essentially fairly generic transducers. Uh, they come from third parties and they're great. They're great transducers. Don't get me wrong. Um, but because they are designed to work with a wide range of products, you know, there's um, some, some kind of fudge factor, I guess, that's kind of built into them uh, to make them work with many different brands of sonar and different applications and that sort of thing. Um, with Dragonfly, we were able to kind of design it as a high-performance system, so everything really works together to its best uh, possible means, and, and it really shows in the performance of the product. So uh, somebody asks uh, the shorter cord, but the option to add an extension. How big of a kayak do you have that you need an extension? <laughs> actually, this is a, actually a very good question because this has kind of been the trend that we're starting to see. Um, and it has started on some of the, um, there are some simpler transducers that we offer, not so much in our fishing line, uh, but for some of our basic navigation instruments. And um, they're, they're the first ones to go to this sort of setup where the transducer actually has a really short pigtail on it. And then you buy whatever size extension lead you need to get the transducer connected to its destination. Um, and that has worked out pretty well with those. So 
Uh, fingers crossed that it's something that would uh, like be a style that we can apply to other things. But um, when we when we do a sonar transducer for a fish finding application, there's a little bit more going on uh, in it because we're actually trying to turn that signal into imagery and not just depth. So we have to be very, very concerned about interference and noise getting into the line and whatnot. So some, that, that's why it isn't instantly possible to do that sort of thing. It takes a little bit more engineering. Right. And, and precisely the reason nobody would want to ever try to shorten their own cable. Yeah. Yep. Someone asked me that just the other day too. And, and I would, you know, I'd love to say, Oh yeah, just, just cut it down and splice it back together. But the reality is, um, you know, in, in one of these Axiom cables, in fact, you can probably kind of see it. Let me, let me show it to you on this one. This is one that we used at a show and the cable got cut off of it. Uh, the camera focus yeah. on that. Focus is going a little wacky, but you, you can see anyway, it. You can kind of see it. Past the ends of the cable, there's 25 individual conductors in there for down vision, side vision, high chirp, uh, 3D, the gyro, the power feed going down to it. So there's so many wires in there. That That's why you really can't cut and shorten these things. Yeah, um, yeah. you almost yeah. have to be a neurosurgeon to put that thing back together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like it's like trying to reconnect a limb that got chopped off. You know? Uh Weiss is asking uh I, I hope I'm not murdering your name dude um about a transducer that fits in a Hobie kayak. In a Hobie kayak. Um I would think um it, it's probably gonna vary a little bit per model, but take a look at uh at Dragonfly or Axiom DV. Um, those have a slightly smaller style transducer. They're going to use the variation of this guy here. Um, so it's a fairly slender transducer, uh, long in overall length for its down vision capability, but generally very small. Uh, you could probably get that up uh, in a scupper or if there are any kind of recesses at all in the bottom. Um, there's a pretty good chance to be able to get that up in there. I know we do have some Hobie owners out there running Ray Marine. Uh, perhaps, uh, I know I, I saw a couple of names in the line that looked familiar. Maybe they could even chat in uh, what they're doing or post a picture of their install. Okay. Martin Toomey is asking about the length on the transducer. Of course, I, I'm going back, so I'm not sure which transducer he's talking about. I know you can find a lot of the specs on the Ray Marine site. We do, yeah. On raymarine.com, we have not only specs, we've actually got CAD files and everything. If you uh, are the engineering type and want to want to know to a millimeter uh, the length of all these things, we do have that up there. Uh, this one in my hand. Oh, let's just uh, get the official measuring tool out here. And uh, <laughs> what are we looking at? This one's about seven and a half inches uh, end to end. The Axiom one is a little bit bigger. I'm going to not measure the transom bracket because you're not going to use that on a kayak. This one's about nine and a half inches for an RV 100 end to end. Yeah, they're, uh, I said, they're just, they're just a hair too big for me to, to get in that, uh, transducer pocket for the, the Kraken. So that's unfortunately, that's that's that. we'll be working with, uh, with Eric and the, the whole team there to, yeah, we get get these things updated, um, but of course, changing the mold for a kayak is is not a, a cheap thing to do. Unfortunately, no. we say. Um, okay, somebody, uh, if you can answer that one, Jim, about the retailers in Mobile, Alabama. Do you guys have a retailer finder on the website? Uh, we do. We have a dealer locator online. Um, off the top of my head, I know um, several of the big major outdoor retailers like Bass Pro and Cabela's, uh, West Marine, all carry Dragonfly. Uh, so if there's any of those near you, that they're definitely worth checking out. Um, but you can definitely pop on to RainMarine.com um, and our dealer locator is available right off our homepage. You can key in your zip code and they'll give you the dealers closest to you. Uh, we, we have a lot of uh, really good dealers there in the Mobile area. Uh, and again, my friend, uh, D Kaminsky, she's a heck of an angler. She is a kayak angler. Um, I think she's in Florida, but uh, I've known her a long time just through conversations and meeting at trade shows, a wonderful person and a great angler. Um, she had a question about the purchase, the dragonfly separate from the transducer. 
I know you can buy transducer separate, but it, when you buy a dragonfly, it comes with a transducer. It does. Yeah. Dragonfly is, uh, we designed it so that out of the box, you have everything you need to use it. Uh, right. So all dragonfly systems come with a uh, transom, um, uh, Transit mount convertible transducer. So it's this this guy here, this uh, CPT DVS style transducer. Um, when I say it's convertible, there's for power boat, there's usually a bracket attached to this slot on the top. Uh, but in a kayak application, you just pop that off or you don't install it. And it makes it nice and slim so you can get it into your scuppers. Uh, uh, well, into here's, recesses at the bottom of your boat. Get that in the right. Here's my Dragonfly uh, 7 Pro. And... I've got a Burley Pro cover on it, so I don't know if you, how much you've seen of these, Jim, but protects the back really nice, gives me a little shade so I can see it better. But I, I can tell you, with the addition of the Yak Attack plate here and some gear tracks mm -hmm. that are already on my kayak, I can rig one of these fish finders on my kayak in just a matter of minutes uh, and, and take it back off. Because I, when I travel, I just throw it on there, and it, it's pretty much the exact same setup I would have on my kayak at home. Oh, you know what, Jim? I, a question that I know that somebody was asking earlier, and I, I didn't see it. It scrolled by so fast, and it was one of the first ones. The Nakwa batteries. Oh, I know yes. you're, you're running Nakwa on yours. Yep, I am. Uh, and he had a specific question about the 12-volt, 10-amp Nakwa and the Axiom. How would the, how long will that, um, that battery run that Axiom? Um, so and I think he has a 7. Yeah, um, uh, on my boat, I have an Axiom 9, and I have a couple of other things hooked up to my battery as well. I have the uh, remote control. Um, I also have, um, from our Evolution autopilot line, I actually have the Evolution heading sensor. Uh, so it's a digital compass, essentially. Um, so I'm powering several things uh, from it. And anyway, with my 10 amp hour Nakwa battery has gone over eight hours um, and this is out on the river uh, near here. So the battery actually outlasted me. Um, I, I ran out of uh, <laughs> paddle steam, you know, before the battery ran out of uh, power for the Axiom. Um, so I, I'm a big, big fan of those Nakwa batteries. Um, incredible amount of power in such a small, uh, small container. Small, lightweight. I mean, like I said, back in the day we were running, um, well, honestly, it, Old story was one of the first finders uh, I put on a kayak was a, a Humminbird uh, Wide 100. And it was in a portable unit, and it ran off, ran off those square um, lantern batteries. Oh, yes. You know, so you had to buy new ones of those every time. So that's how long I've been doing that. Uh, and then, of course, it was switching to the 12-volt SLA batteries, which weigh about 8 pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, so the the switch to the knock was it is absolutely amazing. I, like you said, the power and uh, they're they're so sealed up, so bulletproof for the kayak angle, and it's so light. One of the things I'll say too, um, kind of regardless of what battery system you're using, the the number one thing on whether you're running a, a small fish finder like a dragonfly or a big MFD like an Axiom. Uh, the backlight of the unit is the number one draw of power. And if you're in conditions where if, even if you can back the backlight off by five or 10 percent, um, your runtime on your battery is going to go up big time. Um, so a lot, if I know I'm going to be out for, you know, a long, long day on the water or I know that, you know, I'm not going to be able to charge tonight. So I want to have power for tomorrow. Um, I'll take my backlight and even just bump it down to 90% or 80%. Um, I still have pretty good visibility of it, but that, that'll really extend the battery life. That's, that's an amazing tip. Um, and, of course, if you're out there at night, you know, turn that thing way down because it really affects yeah, your down. night vision. <laughs> just remember that the next day when you go out to turn the lighting back up, because otherwise you think your fish finder is not working. I know this from experience because I did that on our trip to Florida. We went out on the night before and I backed it way down. And then I went to use my fish finder the next day. I'm like, stinking thing isn't working. I must have a dead mm -hmm. battery. And then, and then I, I turned it on and off like five times. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I thought I charged my battery. No, I had turned the lighting all the way down and I just wasn't seeing the screen. So <laughs> I've been there myself. <laughs> yeah. Be smarter than me. Um, we're, we've been on for actually a little over an hour now, so we're just going to take a couple more questions really quick, and then I'm going to let 
Jim, go get back to work. It is Friday after all. He probably wants to go home pretty soon. Uh, we have Weiss with a, another uh, question on the warranty on the ring. Yeah. Rates. So the Dragonfly units have a warranty of one year for parts and labor. Um, the Axiom units have a warranty of two years uh, for parts and labor on those. Um, That's great. And, and you know what? I've, they, and they, they have been pretty bulletproof, you know. Uh, you know, I have a question also myself is, um, what do you think of like dielectric grease and that sort of thing on your connectors? You know, it certainly can't hurt any. I, I did it on mine. Um, when I installed it, you know, the way I kind of looked at it is in a kayak, you're a lot closer to the water than, you know, on, on almost any other kind of powerboat. You know, <laughs> the water is right there all the time. So it's very easy to take a wave or, you know, even just you know, a big splash and, and get everything soaking wet. So um, I, I did use dielectric grease in all of my connections. It's, you know, it's cheap, kind of low cost insurance, but it keeps all those contacts from turning green. And you know, Is there anything to avoid? Um... In terms of the grease, no. Yeah, it, I mean, can you shoot it with WD-40? Um, oh, um, you know, the, the the grease is really the best thing because it's kind of engineered for that. WD-40 is not bad. I mean, it's it's got water dissipating properties in it, so it'll keep the moisture out uh, of your contacts. It, it's WD-40 is pretty good for cleaning something out that did get wet. Like, you know it took a hit and it's got salt water in it. You can okay. spray it out with some WD-40. That'll kind of neutralize flush it out. Um, and then when you put it back together, some fresh dielectric grease in there is never a bad idea. Awesome. Awesome. Jim, like I said, you, we've, this has flown by. Um, I really appreciate you being here today. I appreciate everybody who's made the comments and shared. Uh, looking at this, we had 60 shares um, and 155 comments, actually 173 comments. Uh, so I really appreciate everybody who's been here. Let's keep this thing going. I'll be back here Next Friday with James Macbeth from Jackson Kayak. We're going to talk about new products um, and the the, the uh, Liska Kayak, uh, maybe the Blue Sky Project, and get everybody involved. But uh, as far as the giveaway, um, we're going to take all the comments and we're going to put them in a randomizer. And I will be announcing the winner either later today or early tomorrow. Uh, it just, I've got some appointments, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to actually take care of that right away, but somebody who, who, who took care of business on here is going to win that, uh, that Raymarine Dragonfly 5 Pro, and we can't thank Jim enough. Also, he said he's going to throw in some hats, uh, so I'll have yes. some hats for some winners as well. Uh, so if you don't win the Fish Finder, maybe you'll get a hat, uh, just like the one I'm wearing. Uh, again, please, you know, support those sponsors who are supporting us. And um, thanks you all for being here. Thank you, D, Michael, everybody. Um, Jim, have a great weekend, man. Oh, you too, Jim. Thank you. And um, it's been we'll, uh, fun. Thank you, yeah, everybody. Man. For, thank oh, let's do it again. Let's, uh, seriously, I mean, I, I love this. Uh, let's do it again. Um, you know, if it, whenever there's a new product, anything you want to talk about, you want to talk about the FLIR stuff. I, I'm super interested in some of the FLIR stuff as well. Uh, and I think some of that stuff is actually very appropriate for the kayakers, particularly the guys who get out in the fog and stuff like I do. Yeah, it's a um, lot of fun. So a lot of stuff we can talk about. So we'll get Jim back on here again. Again, thank you, everybody. Remember, always wear your PFD and use your paddle right side up. Take care. <laughs>